Hey everybody, Elizabeth Nader back with you, the Nader Narrative on Jersey First TV. I'm so excited about this show and to introduce Ron Armstrong of Stand Up Michigan, but also Operation Choose Freedom to New Jersey. Ron, welcome to the show. Great to be with you. I'm so pleased that I got to know you and uh, listen to you talk about the initiatives you're, you're working on. Uh, Stand Up Michigan is fabulous, very similar to some things we're trying to do in New Jersey, but Operation Choose Freedom, I was just enamored with this, really this movement, this initiative that you've started. And uh, there's so many grassroots people in New Jersey, so many efforts to try to put forward what we believe our founders really uh, worked so hard and died for to give us and choose freedom is just an incredible way to do that. So Ron, by way of introduction to everyone in New Jersey, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got involved with Stand Up Michigan. And then we'll get to how that also led to choose freedom. Well, I guess I like many of the people that are listening and watching um, we're just a regular businessman, family person. Uh, I own a business. I started when I was 22 years old. Uh, it's kind of a messaging company. It's displays and exhibits for trade shows. And when these pandemic and lockdowns happened, our business was literally closed. Nothing that we did from job fairs to regular conventions, anything that they were all done, they were over. And, uh, and so that was when, uh, the, the stand at Michigan really was born during the couple of weeks after that, it started as a small Facebook group saying, uh, does this seem right to you? It's two weeks to bend the curve, but something doesn't seem right. How's this affecting you and your business and whatever. And so that Facebook group, uh, quickly was determined with my messaging background to say, let's get a group of people together and let's create an organization that gives us a collective voice not only to our legislature uh, to uh, fight against mandates and force things with our as parents uh, uh, from education to businesses and when they should be open and what they have to do with their clientele. And then it moved on into all the other things we're all familiar with. But uh, we grew to over 400,000 members in a matter of weeks, like five weeks. Wow. Uh, and uh, it was a it was an amazing thing. But you know why we grew? Because we weren't regurgitating stories and articles. We were only posting stories, stories from people. They were real uh, situations. I've never educated my kids before. I've never done in-person learning. Yeah. Uh, do you see what the kids are learning? Uh, I, I can't get unemployment. Uh, it just goes on and on. And so they were finding people were finding each other and they weren't finding them in their own community. They were finding them on social media at the time as everybody was kind of stuck at home. And so as this grew, we began being uh, influencers through our legislature to say, do not extend this governor's emergency orders. Right. Uh, these are illegal. Uh, the people aren't going to stand for it. And we gave strength to our legislature to stand up. Now, our governor uh, pivoted to a 1945 law and locked everybody down, executive order after executive order. It happened all over the country in many ways, shapes, and forms. And we know that the fear was real at the time, but we also knew that uh, we were finding our voices. Uh, we that were always the people just, again, raising our families, uh, uh, going to church, uh, coaching our kids, all the things that we were busy doing. But you know what we weren't busy doing? We weren't helping to run elections. We weren't busy uh, actually uh, uh, serving in our own communities, right. in school boards and other places like that. And so that's kind of where we started as Stand Up Michigan. And then uh, from there, we began saying, okay, now this is going to end. It's going to end. And of course, two years later, here we are, and we're moving to more of a national message now. Right. Well, it, first of all, Michigan suffered. And, you know, we in New Jersey felt like we went through hell for two years. Really difficult governor. We got an F minus in how we handled the pandemic. You didn't fare much better. I mean, you talk about a governor with overreach. I mean, she absolutely was awful. And so you very much like us, you suffered under this. And it's interesting that you say people sort of found their way into something new before where they didn't even have, you know, before they didn't have to get involved. I mean, I, you know, there's somebody who's really active here in grassroots who has a famous story of telling me three years ago, he didn't know who the governor was. And, you know, you didn't have to, right? I mean, you didn't have to worry about your school board. You didn't have to watch over your kid's shoulder to see what they were being taught. So I would say to you, and I would guess you would concur that the blessing of COVID and the blessing of all this is it activated many of us who were just living our lives as Americans. And suddenly now 
we are seeing a system which you and I both know, Ron, has been moving this direction for a long time, and we simply were not involved. So now in Michigan, just like New Jersey, you're seeing people run for school board, right? You're seeing people stand up and say, we're demanding more out of our legislators. You're seeing people push back, businesses band together. So you managed to pull all those voices together and stand, stand up Michigan um, was effective and gave people a home. Is that still active? Oh, it's active and growing. What we did is we pivoted from a, a, I guess you could say an umbrella organization where we were speaking from 40,000 feet, meaning just on social media, connecting with people to where we are now organizing by county and they actually are full operating county chapters because nice. all politics is local. Yes. Uh, if we don't change things at a local level, and as right. we say, we have three pillars, care, inform, and activate. We have to care for people where they are, understand the fear is real. Secondly, we have to inform them. And the problem is, whether it's the right or the left, most of the information you see in print, most of it you see on social media is simply not true or not completely true. And so they want to know and find a source where they can find truthful, accurate information and data that they can repeat and that they can have a consistent message to move forward and to be able to help people. But they've got to do it again local. So we say it starts with you, your family, your neighbor, your neighborhood, and your community. Yeah. And if we do it there, then we can change all of our states and we can change the trajectory of, again, your state, wherever you happen to live, and our country. Yeah. And so that's that's where we spent 2021. And now in 2022, we're off to saying, how do we continue to keep this not just in Michigan? Right. And we also expanded into Stand Up Virginia. And that is where the parents got involved is when you yeah. see the uh, the 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 different county school systems and the and the huge amounts of parents that came out and voted. And they literally turned a 10 point loss uh, uh, in 2020 to a three-point victory for Yonkins in right. a uh, in a year just after the 2020 election. And so we know it's possible, but we have to capture those 30% of the people who do not identify by Republican or Democrat. Right. They identify right. as Republicans, as parents, as business owners who just want to be left alone yes. to basically run their lives. Yes. A Americans who just believe in uh, what this country affords them in terms of opportunity, who want to work hard, who want to raise their children on their terms. And so now you organize by counties. That's amazing. You guys are growing. I mean, what you helped influence in Virginia was certainly incredible, right? I mean, it's definitely, there was the election of the parents. The parents had so much to say about that outcome, but it's hopeful, right? Because we can repeat that across the country. One thing I want to point out about you is I really believe um, in the fact that we each get unique gifts and you have have definitely a gift for messaging. You understand it. Um, you see it. Uh, not only is it your business, obviously, but in the way that you look at things, you understand how to message better. And really, you know, we as humans react to good branding and good messaging. And we, you know, we watch people being told lies. And if they're told lies really well, they believe them. And we have to understand that. And I think that's incredible. But putting the truth together requires messaging. You can't just think people are going to see the truth. So Ron, you've been able to bring um, an incredible talent that you used in the business world to succeed. And now you're bringing it to the country. So let's pivot and start to talk about Operation Choose Freedom, about what you saw now as an opportunity, because this story is incredible. Well, I felt like... Uh... As with all things, uh, again, branding is important and messaging is important. And I felt like that uh, our side, on, on the right, conservatives, Christians, uh, really lack a cohesive message. Yeah. The left has the media who gives them talking points that are repeated over and over, and they become, whether they're truthful or not, they become repeatable and people remember them. And so I looked at what messaging meant, and I also realized that we may need, and we do need, for 2022 and beyond, a message that that regular Americans identify with. And that is where, uh, and it wasn't just for me, I got together with a large group of other thought leaders, people who had gifts as well in the messaging department, and said, let's talk through this and find a message that can resonate with just everyday people. And uh, it became uh, choose freedom. Number one, everybody wants uh, the ability to choose. Secondly, freedom we know is is easy. It's just a word to a lot of people, though, because it's, you know, we want our freedoms. We want our freedom. What does that mean exactly? Mm -hmm. 
And so we knew that we had to tie this into two things. One is we've got to get back to connecting to our churches. And the churches aren't going to get involved in politically. So the message of MAGA and ultra MAGA and America first and America's great, whatever it is, isn't going to be pretty much talked about in the church. Right. It also is a little bit of a polarizing message, if you will. And so I really feel like for this, this season, we need to have a message that goes back and captures the historical nature of our country and more importantly, right. the foundation of it. And the foundation of w why it was it created? What were the words that were used in the past? And guess what? Those words weren't just created by those men. They were from God. And that's the foundation of our country. It's important for us to know that because it's where our strength comes from. It's where our ability to, uh, to claim what those things were done. Remember, it's not about the men. It's not about those founding fathers and what it is they said. It is indeed about their message, which was always that we should have the rights, the natural right, as Samuel Adams stated. Uh, and we know that that natural right, it was given to us from God, as, as Samuel Adams also said in 1872. And in the preamble, what did Thomas Jefferson said again, we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have to go back and capture that, re-educate the young people and help them realize that in all things, we need to choose to be free. And I think if we do that in at right now, we will separate ourselves, especially because the left has so overplayed their hand. I think evil yes. has so overplayed their hands Correct. that we are now able to, I think, uh, uh, separate ourselves, but not based on a man or an individual or an ideology based on a past time or place, but on our foundation, which is immovable. You know, it's interesting because um, this is so this is so inspired, I believe, and it, it just hits home in so many ways. If you look back at what happened when Trump was elected and the way that he represented so many people, uh, unlikely, right? You have a billionaire with, you know, a specific personality, yet people felt they could relate to him, that he was representing them. And the movement of America First and what he created with MAGA, uh, for the time that it, it, it allowed people to come together and see themselves in each other, and it truly brought everyone together. But what did the left do with that? As you say, they have now used it as a weapon against right against the same group of people. So we really, as you talk about so brilliantly, we really need a new rallying cry that isn't about politics. It's about our basic rights. And um, our children are not educated on those rights. Uh, people are ignorant of them. And we know that because when you look at COVID for two years, people who are ignorant of their rights are the ones that allowed these things to happen. If you knew what your rights really were, you would never allow the government to take them. So it has so many facets to it. Now you talk about the fact that this isn't one group. It's not like you're creating this group called, you know, choose freedom and it's going to be the group. This is your gift. I'm going to call it that your gift to grassroots to say, um, and not just grassroots, but anybody who is looking for that big tent, let's all come together under this message. Talk about that. Well, I think it's important because uh, they have always taken uh, the positive messages and made it about the people that speak them and yes. try and tear down the men or the people that spoke them again. And they think if they tear down the man, they get rid of the message. In this case, they cannot get rid of the message because it's within us. We have an innate ability to want to be free. We were created to be free. We were created to have a free choice, a free will, if you will. And so I really feel like it will resonate. And again, this needs to be not owned by any group because freedom isn't. It's not to be controlled by any group, meaning you're not going to go to one place and a bunch of trademarking of what goes on. We have provided branding and other things for groups to grasp onto, but there's multiple options with that. Mm -hmm. We're simply saying the talking points around choosing freedom is a winning message that will resonate because it creates those talking points wherever your causes, if it's medical freedom, if it's election integrity, if it's the rights of the unborn, choose freedom for the unborn, choose freedom again of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. It works there. Choose freedom from oppression, from tyranny. It goes on and on. But when you do repeat these to people who are questioning, what does this mean exactly? What does this choose freedom mean? When you ask them back the question, don't you feel like you should have the right to choose for yourself, for your children, for your business, 
what you wear on your face, what you choose to get jabbed with, uh, how, when your business is going to be open without a governmental control, whether it's at a state or a federal level. And I believe that people wish ultimately to be free. I think it's what drives us as created beings is the desire to be free, but we need truth in order to be free. So really this in operation, if you will, is interesting because you can take any issue and we have so many grassroots groups in New Jersey and of course throughout the country. And as you say, they, a lot of them are single issue. Um, it might be a 2A group, um, that's freedom, right? As you say, it might be a pro-life group, that's a freedom, medical freedom. Um, and all of these groups really can come together and coalesce and say, this is about your ability to choose freedom. It's incredibly uh, just organically right there in the way we founded America. So if you're looking, even let's go to candidates, two candidates running against each other. One has a choose freedom message. The other does not. I, I would argue that the appeal of that individual who's speaking this and um, really using those messages to the broader individuals who maybe never vote, to, who maybe never get engaged, you know, finally understand that that's what I want. That's what I thought I was living in, by the way, Ron. We're, didn't we all think we were living in a country where we could choose freedom? So that's what's genius about it is that you can apply it almost to any piece of legislation, to any grassroots group, to uh, any single issue, to any individual running for um, any kind of uh, uh, you know position, whether it's school board all the way up to uh, president. So this is, I think, the genius and in, in what it is. Well, the right does not. Uh, 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 we operate in silos quite a bit, and grassroots organizations are very territorial by nature. No matter where I travel in the country, that's what I hear is that. Uh, so we, we tend to duplicate efforts in a lot of ways, too. And so what we found is this choose freedom messaging that can be utilized by all can fall under statewide Freedom, uh, choose freedom festivals or choose freedom rallies, whatever you want to call them, choose freedom parties can literally bring those groups together where no one is owning the event. It isn't it isn't branded by a specific group or purpose, but instead brings us together by a cohesive message. And I think when you mentioned about President Trump and the fact that we resonated with him, what we were resonating with is he was speaking for all of us. Yes. The 30 and 40,000 people that show up continue today is because he repeats our thoughts. He says what we're thinking. Yeah. And that is what has happened over the history of time. It's what Ronald Reagan did. It's what Rush Limbaugh did. And they connected. And it was never about them as a person. And, and President Trump said over and over again, it isn't about me. It's about you. They're not coming after me. They're coming after you. Right. When they come after me, it's because they don't want my this message. They don't want you to be together. They don't want you not united. And so that's what we're saying right now is that the Choose Freedom Initiative will not be about an individual. It will be about a message that we can all resonate and get behind because guess what? It's already guaranteed in our Constitution. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, it was guaranteed to us by our Creator. Yeah, more importantly, absolutely. So what have you seen the reaction to this? What What's happening right now with this effort? Um, you are obviously talking to as many groups as possible throughout the country. Uh, tell us kind of where things stand with this uh, initiative. Well, I've talked to hundreds of leaders of grassroots organizations across the country, and it is universal that they agree that this message is timely, that the message is needed, that consistent messaging is is an absolute uh, necessity for us to, because understand that the media isn't going to carry our water for us. It's not yeah. going to repeat what we say, which means we have to go to the ground level. Uh, uh, and that means, again, those school board candidates, those, those areas, think about this, the areas that people are running that can't be identified Republican or Democrat. They're right. nonpartisan issues. That's right. But if you're a choose freedom person, an individual, and you stand for certain principles and ideology, then you will gather these people under you because you, again, are speaking and you're going to protect their interests and their individual rights and freedoms for those parents and those business owners. And I believe that's it. Less regulation, uh, free market needs to work, all the things we know of from the right side are conservatism. But it goes deeper than that because it goes to, I believe, our spiritual side. And I believe we are in a spiritual war. 
right. Uh, right now. And that means we need a cohesive message that I am hoping is going to resonate as well in the churches. And we're seeing right now Choose Freedom rising up in Minnesota, in Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, uh, North Carolina, and now in New Jersey, as we're talking to you and uh, yeah. some organizations there. But all over America, we're going to see it bubbling up. And again, this is not for the 2022 cycle, but this is to carry 2023 into 2024 so that we are not being tied to uh, a message that they can take away from us. After all, what are the left going to say against choosing freedom? How do you say anything against that? And and I think it also gives the churches who have been um, afraid maybe to stand up and speak out uh, in a disappointing way, but there's some fear there. It gives them a message that doesn't feel political, right? And it speaks to very much the spiritual aspect of the fact that we were created free and that's what God intended us to be and he wants us to seek that out. So it gives them uh, verbiage, if you will, it gives them a way to speak to their people. It also gives parents who don't, I think some, I've talked to a lot of parents who want to run for office or do something on school board, and they feel often intimidated that they don't mm -hmm. have the language or they don't have the political knowledge. But by understanding this is a simple platform, you can look at any issue, any decision, any vote and say, is that vote issue decision, is that on the side of choosing freedom or not? And so you can coalesce around that and feel as though you have a way of analyzing what's coming at you. So we're arming people here who uh, previously didn't feel as though they belonged in this sphere, but um, we know all politics is local, as you say. And so, you know, this encourages everyone to get involved. I want to read um, what you wrote in uh, the summary document, the, the last line. I need to read this because I love it. Uh, it says, bottom line, you have it in bold. We have to identify a unifying message for the people. It is time for our reset. Interesting. One which will return all Americans to the freedoms on which this great nation was founded, the freedoms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That right there says it all. It does. It does, and, and I, uh, I, I, I'm I hoping that what it does is – it's got to do two things. One is all of this messaging is important, and by the way, we haven't even seen or talked about the branding, but the branding is powerful, and people want to wear it. Yep. You can incorporate your own logo, your own name in with it as you choose, meaning there's no locked-in things you need to do with this branding because right. it, it is it does resonate with people. But it is important only that that if, if this empowers you, if this touches you in some way – the calling right now is that uh, is that we have to get involved. Yes. Uh, we have to, if there isn't the person to run for that county commission or that school board, it might very well be you. You have to be willing to sacrifice something of yourself yes. in order to change things because we so often, and especially on our side, believe other people will do it. Yeah. But it really is time for us to step up and do it. And with this message, it gives you the strength. It gives you and people... Uh, the, the, your grassroots leaders around the country will help empower you. They will provide you the army of people that will go knock on the doors and will help you both get elected, but will also support you in a choose freedom as a choose freedom candidate or governing in a choose yeah. freedom way. Um, and I think it's going to resonate uh, in a, in a big way. Um, look, it's, it's not the ultimate solution. Um, we've got to continue to pray, but I believe that messaging is where it starts. Absolutely. And I, I believe this is inspired. I just want to show everyone here um, some of the branding, because if they see this, um, they'll recognize what we're talking about here. It's beautifully done. I think that matters. I really do. Um, again, we are visual beings. We are people that respond to branding. That's how corporations build uh, what they do so well. And so, you know, you understand that. And um, this branding is very well done. And so you provide the different grassroots organizations with access to this. They can use it as they see fit. I know that you've worked it into Stand Up Michigan and to your own graphics. Mm -hmm. So there for everyone, they can see. Um, so New Jersey, when you start to see this Choose Freedom out there, you're going to understand where it's coming from and uh, the individual who started it. I know you don't want any credit, Ron, but I have to tell you, uh, kudos to using your purpose and your gifts to put something out there. And now it's up to all of us to make it work. Um, but I think the, the timing is uh, pretty incredible. Um, any last words to our audience here in New Jersey as we wrap this up? I would just say that uh, you need to know that uh, despite what you hear uh, in, in your social media, in the media uh, especially, 
uh, is that uh, we are the majority. When I say that, I'm not talking about political party. I'm talking about people who believe in the right to choose and for freedom. Uh, the left would have us believe that we should sit down and be quiet and we should follow the orders as, as you will, uh, take away our freedoms and dole them back out to us as they see fit. Um, and we don't agree with that. And I don't. I believe that 70 or 80 percent of Americans uh, believe in freedom. And so I would just encourage you again to get involved in your local community. And it might be in an organization that is a cause that you're really, really important and, and you, you buy into. But it's also important to support the other causes that are conservative in nature because we are only going to succeed if we are, have one large collective voice. That is absolutely the truth. That's the best way to end this, Ron. I could talk to you forever. I'm so inspired by what you're doing. Thank you on behalf of all patriots uh, for putting yourself out there. We will continue to work together. In fact, some people might be seeing you in New Jersey next spring. More information on that later. But once again, Ron, thank you so much. Tell everybody where they can go to find out more about uh, Choose Freedom. Well, if you go to standupmichigan.com, you can sign up for our email there, and uh, we will be giving, with that email, we'll be giving you links to that. You can also uh, get a hold of uh, Elizabeth, or if there's a contact in your local community there, and they can get in touch with me, and I will get you the full list of assets for the Choose Freedom, Operation Choose Freedom, that you can utilize that best fits your organization. Brilliant. All right, Ron, thank you again for your time and for everything, and uh, we will have you back. We'll be watching this and getting involved into my audience, guys. Pay attention what's going on here. There's so much hope out there. Just get involved. We will 